What's up guys, it's Merck back again with a, another video tutorial on DJing. Uh, today I'm going to be talking primarily about hot cues, uh, but also how to use hot cues with slip mode and basically just going over slip mode in general. Um, there are a couple different ways that you can sort your hot cues and memory locations and stuff like that, but basically I'm going to show you some of the prep work that you can do in record box beforehand so that you're ready to do this stuff on stage when you're performing or when you are recording a mix for uh, just a DJ set. Um, so into record box we go. I'm going to pull up, uh, or I have a track pulled up. Uh, this track is a trap song that I made a couple months back um, and we're going to go into setting hot cues on this and then how to export and bring those up on the CDJs. So. Um, when I'm initially diving into a track to find good spots to set hot cues for uh, like triggering or maybe launching a track from those certain spots, uh, I'm looking for very particular things. So in this case, since we're going to be using slip mode to sort of uh, kind of do like live sampling or live remixing for this certain track, I'm going to look for cool elements in this track that I can set some hot cues on uh, that I can trigger throughout the different parts of the song. So I'm going to go through and maybe look for some vocal hits or some drum hits or percussion hits, whatever would be cool to kind of like live sample to while the track is playing. So I'm going to go through uh, the intro, maybe grab like a clap and then some vocal parts. Okay. So I'm going to go in and grab this clap right here. And now I can just press Q, and remember Q is what sets your temporary Q point uh, at that certain spot, which is kind of just like an anchor, a temporary anchor. So I'm going to set my Q point there, and then I can click any of the hot Q cells that I want to store it into. Um, an important thing to notice is Rekordbox has been updated to support the, uh, the 2000 Nexus 2 setup, or the CDJ, uh, CDJs, which have uh, now up to eight hot cues. We're on the original Nexus, so we have up to three, so I'm going to set three points. So the first one is that clap that I just selected. I'm going to go through and maybe try and grab some kind of vocal hits. Okay. Let's get this vocal hit. All right where he says, uh, put my cue point there. Press hot Q B to store it in there. And then I'm actually, I'm just gonna get the one after that as well, right before the drop, so I can trigger these. So now I have on my first one, hot Q A, I have the single hand clap. Uh, on hot Q B, I have a vocal chop, and then same thing on C, I just have a uh, variation of one of the vocal chops that I can trigger to while the track is playing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and export this playlist now that I've updated this track. So I'm just going to right click on this playlist base, export to, and then my flash drive that I have plugged in is called Merc. So I'm going to let that export. Pretty quick because I already had these loaded in here. Now I'm going to eject that. And now I can take it into my CDJ and show you guys how the hot cues come up on there. Alrighty, so I've plugged in my USB to the CDJ, and uh, since I'm running on a USB, I'm going to hit USB on the CDJ to pick that input. Everything will load up, and then since I exported this as a playlist, which was my playlist called Bass for ba my bass music, uh, I'm going to go to Playlist, Bass, and then uh, my track that I did the hot cues for was the last one called Move Too Fast. Okay, so we have the track loaded up. Uh, you can see since we've exported in record box, we have the waveform, we have the BPM, the key, everything you need. Uh, but we do what we do still need to do is pull up those hot cues to kind of uh, refresh them into the CDJ. So what we can do is just hold down this record slash call button, and call is the function that we're going to want to use. So we we hold that down, and now you can see that my hot cues are flashing. So we have A, B, and C flashing which uh, corresponds to the hot cues that we set up in record box. So I'm just going to click through these really quick to load them up. There's A, B, and C. 
So now they're loaded up, and at any time when the track is playing, I can trigger those hot cues, jump back to that certain spot for a second, and then continue with uh, where I was playing in the track. One thing to notice, and I'm gonna get into slip mode, before we activate slip mode, when the track is playing and I activate these hot cues, it's gonna go back to that section in the song for a second, and then it's gonna just play from there. So it's gonna play whatever that clap was that we set on the first hot cue. It'll play that clap, and then it'll just keep going from there. Uh, that can be useful sometimes if you're looking to maybe like start a track from there, um, but if you wanna keep your timing nice and neat, that's when you're gonna use slip mode. So what slip mode does is essentially, if you're doing any kind of looping or scratching or triggering hot cues, the playhead in the background continues moving as if you never even started that looping or triggered those hot cues. So you can trigger back to that hot cue for a second, then jump back into the timing as if you never even hit that hot cue. So I'm gonna trigger one of these initially uh, and just do it without slip mode so you can see how it acts. Okay, so I'm in the intro of the track. Now if I hit hot cue B, which is on that first vocal hit that we did, it jumps straight to that section and then it continues playing from there, which can be a cool effect and it can be a very cool way to uh, initiate a transition or start a track. But what we wanna do is turn on slip mode. Okay, so remember the playhead whenever we trigger those hot cues, is gonna keep moving in the background so that we can keep the timing nice and neat. So, i go ahead and turn off my looping mode so I can see everything. Now, I'm gonna fast forward to the drop because we're gonna trigger these hot cues in the drop to add some variation and kind of do like a live remix. Cool, so you guys get the idea. We're kind of just triggering back to these hot cues for that one beat, and then right after that one beat is finished playing through, it jumps back to where we should have been if we hadn't done that at all. Um, really quickly, if you are curious, if you can trigger that hot cue for one more than, or a little bit more than one beat, you can. So if you hold this down when you're trying to trigger that, you can play it for up to a full bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys that. Okay, so timing was a little bit weird there, but you get the idea. So I can hold down that hot cue, I can trigger it for up to a bar, and it's gonna jump back there to the hot cue, play for a bar, and then go back to where I should have been. Um, now, when you initially uh, engage slip mode or turn on slip mode, uh, you'll notice that you have some looping options that come up here on the display of the CDJ. Turn on slip mode and those looping options come up. Now, these are kind of shortcuts to trigger these nice, neat lo uh, loops that we have or that we can set up with this track. Um, and those correspond to this needle search strip, which is touch screen. So if I'm playing this track, you have triplets, you have half notes, Right when you pull up uh, slip mode, you have those looping options and then you can trigger those on the needle search. And since we have slip mode on, it's gonna keep, keep the timing nice and neat so we get out of that loop and then we can go back to where we were. Um, but you can also do that with the manual looping buttons up here. So I'm gonna go to more of the breakdown. Okay, turn on slip mode. Start a loop. When I hit the gas, you lose too bad. So we have that loop going right now, and we can speed it up if we wanted to. Trigger one of those pre made uh, loop formats, so which in that case was half notes. And then, right when we feel that the drop is coming, we can release that loop, and then it goes back to into that drop uh, 
as if we never even started looping. So your timing and everything just stays really nice. Um, Alrighty, so I'm going to go back into the drop and I'm gonna show you guys, if we didn't have slip mode, maybe you're not on a Nexus setup or uh, you are just on some kind of CDJ that doesn't have slip mode. If you're triggering your hot cues, usually they're gonna act like this. So we're in the drop and then I'm gonna trigger one of those hot cues. So, you can kind of get it to work, you can keep the timing to seem like it's natural, but uh, slip mode definitely improves that. So, if I triggered back to that clap that was in the intro of the track, it's just going to trigger that clap, and then it's going to continue playing in the intro, which might uh, completely kill energy, which it probably will if you're going from the drop to the intro. So we'll do that. I'm going to trigger that clap. Okay. So it just triggers that clap and then you're stuck back into the intro. Um, obviously, there are many things you can do with slip mode. You can uh, trigger your hot cues, you can do your looping to keep the timing nice, you can get on here and scratch, you can throw the track completely in reverse. So let's try that. So let's do it right before the drop. So I can completely throw the track in reverse, throw it back into forward so it plays regularly and then it'll go into the drop if I time it right. A um, lot of stuff you can do with these, it's just all about experimenting and figuring out the timing and where these certain samples sound good in uh, certain spots of the track. So get hands on, experiment, grab some tracks you like or some tracks that you've been working on and test it out. And uh, you can also set this stuff live, so if you wanted to. When we initially got up here, you could just press this button once to go into record mode instead of holding it down to go into call mode. So now, if I wanted to, I could set A right here. So, that's no longer the clap in the intro, that is. Can you do that before the drop? So, you can set them on here, you can set them in record box. Obviously, if you have the time to do a little bit of prep work in record box and you're not up there trying to do it all on stage, that might be a little better, uh, better off for you and you might not have to scramble so quickly to set up hot cues live. Uh, but get in there, experiment, and try this stuff out. So thank you guys very much. Again, my name is Merck. Have a good day. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.